Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. You know, for the past, uh, what, uh, 18 months, well, almost two years now, we've been hearing Trump and listening to his uh, fake news and his falsehoods and lies and deceptions and whatnot. And, and you think that, you know, like he invented that? No, he didn't invent that. In fact, today's show is about disinformation in America, and it didn't start with Trump. It started, hmm, my goodness, 30 years before that. And Trump, in the seven commandments of disinformation, is actually being used. He, in my opinion, is the useful idiot that is included in the seven commandments. So, my co-host, Tim Apicella. Hi, Tim. Hey, Jay. Trump week today. Okay. Yep. And Cynthia Sinclair. Oh, God, Cynthia. This is perfect. This is chaos. It is definitely chaos, <laughs> without a doubt. And I wonder if there's any way we can find some respect in this, because it's pretty hard to find in well, this mess. movie number three, which we yes. will discuss. Okay. <clears throat> there are a number of movies <clears throat> in the New York Times lately, in an article written by New York Times reporters, which is excellent, excellent reporting, um, about disinformation in America. Mm -hmm. And um, one of those movies um, tells us the background, one tells us the modus operandi by Vladimir Putin, and one of, us, one of them t puts it in perspective and tries to show how we can conceivably deal with it. Can you summarize what's in the New York Times right now, Tim? Well, basically, it is, the, you said it yourself in the introduction, is the Seven Commandments. And that is an old Russian KGB strategy on how to basically break apart Europe, the cohesiveness of Europe, break apart, you know, in a long game strategy, NATO, and certainly cause dissension in the United States. And um, basically, the Seven Commandments are the following. You've got, the first thing is, find the crack, and that is, Find the area where you can create division. And here in the United States right now, it's over immigration, it's over race relationships, um, certainly um, economic, you know, stratus between uh, certain groups of people and, you know, that live in the United States. It's finding that point where you can break things apart and create dissension amongst the population. The next is the big lie. You've got to put out your, what your statement is to try to create separation of, of people and, and, and countries. Not just people, but also countries. So the big lie is a big part of this. By the way, the big lie was also used in 1920s and 30s in, 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 in Germany, Germany, was the big lie. <clears throat> uh, then you have to wrap around that big lie around what is called the truth. You find something that's 10, 20% true and wrap it around the 80% of the big lie so that there's credibility to the big lie. Right, there's always gotta be that element of truth in all of the right. lies in order for them to work. You know, I hate to say it, but it's kind of like gossip. You know, in all gossip, there's always a small particle of truth, right. but the rest of it is this made up or it's not true. Um, commit, you have to commit to the big lie. So that what, what does this administration do when it comes to commitment? Repeat, repeat, repeat that over and over again. And you certainly see that whenever we see a news conference or any kind of um, statement from the president is you are repeating things continuously. Yep, yep, yep. Right. And so then number like, five oh, is, sorry, is go ahead. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go. <clears throat> well, number five is an old Russian term is find a useful idiot. And I'm not pointing any fingers, but there is a whole scheme of, of social media or even um, talk shows where that individual is the messenger for the big lie. Um, Alex Jones uh, comes to mind. Uh, there's some other radio show hosts that come to mind, but um, I'll keep it to Alex Jones because he's the, fur the furthest one way out there, and he's the messenger for the big lie. And then number six, you have um, when when the press and people do their research and they do you know they they do their fact finding and they bring that to the table it's deny 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 and how many times have we seen that in the last two years no collusion no collusion witch hunt you know witch, witch hunt, hunt. Witch so hunt. deny right. deny deny mm. by doing that you're trying to just <laughs> reinforce the big lie and last but not least is it's the slow the slow approach uh, you know russian disinformation campaigns take decades and they were you know they were doing this back in the 70s and 80s it's nothing new uh, it just accelerated uh, in today's in today's media marketplace. When I was watching one of the um, the films that we're talking about here today, uh, they were they had Reagan on there, and this is what really kind of struck me. 
Reagan was saying the exact same things that we're talking about 1980. today. In 1980, saying we have to watch out for this and this and this, and he went right down the line active of all measures. these things. He referred to active, active measures, measures. That's right. Which is, you know, the yeah. long-term plan, the MO by Putin and Russia. It's so interesting. He knew. Back then, they knew. Well, back then, so, Russia was not to be trusted. Somehow, Russia is our best buddy with this administration. And, you know, what happened? How did that happen? Well, they were criticizing Obama, too, in, in one of these three movies for right. uh, trying, trying to find a diplomatic solution with Russia, not recognizing that Russia was, actually had declared war on us by disinformation. That's well, been going on for a while. And now we have social media that gets involved, which makes it be able to go out to so many more people. But it, the, one of the things that struck, another thing that struck me from the movies is they were talking about the flags that were put out. Um, and one of them was a flag of Putin, and it was actually on his 64th birthday or 65th birthday, something like that, that hung from the George Washington Bridge, right? And then, um, and it says, the peacemaker. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, exactly. I have a picture of it. I almost tried to bring it, but... Um, and then just shortly after, and this was in October, just before um, Trump took office, and then just after he took office, there was another big giant banner um, hung again from the Manhattan Bridge, and this time it was o o Obama saying, uh, exit the murderer. That's what it was, exit the murderer. <laughs> so it's like they would try these kinds of disinformation things in small ways. It used to be newspapers, right? And then these banners and things that they would hang around in cities to, for people yeah, to see picture, on their way to work. Take a picture and send that out on social media. Exactly. And now, and now it's, you know, um, gone a step further and we've got that social media in everybody's hand. You don't have to drive past a big banner, you know, you just turn on your phone and your notifications will tell you all about it. What we don't have anymore is Radio Free Europe. <laughs> yes, know? absolutely. You remember Radio Free oh, Europe? Yeah. NPR, yeah. isn't NPR kind of close? Well, yes and no. Um, <laughs> yes and no. It depends, <laughs> depends on how many commercials they have to run for those shows. <laughs> what interesting yeah, right. is that we here, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, we've seen this with our own eyes, and, and we, you know, maybe we, we don't give it proper respect. But like, for example, the, uh, the, two, the two crowds uh, in New York uh, right after uh, inauguration, uh, where one crowd is not my president and the other crowd was... Uh, you know, he's okay. <clears throat> Both of them were created in Russia, okay? There was a like, uh, and there are many, many more, but there was a like incident in Texas, and it was racial, and there was fighting, and, you know, the, the African Americans and, and the Howleys on the other side of the street, uh, fighting and yelling epithets at each other. Both sides were stirred up by Russia, right. according to the New York Times, right. which I'm sure researched this really well. Right. So what, what you, you, we can see this, we can see this, and, and we, don't, we don't know what to make of it. And we can't necessarily, and this is my question to you, Tim, we can't necessarily connect it with Trump. Where does Trump fit in all this? He's the one who seemed to come up with fake news. Uh, he's the one who, uh, you know, is, is pulling the wings out of the First Amendment. Um, he is the one who, um, you know, seems to be buddy with Russia. Um, where does he fit? With a campaign that's 30 years old, a campaign of active measures, uh, a campaign that Putin has been, you know, developing for all these years. Well, I think where it fits is um, the strategy of how do I get elected in the first place. Number two is, um, yeah, the way I got into this office might have been not above board, and so now what do I have to do to get myself out of it and distract the population and have them basically zombie-like <clears throat> followers? And I'm not saying everyone who votes for Trump is a zombie, but there are a certain percentage of people that just follow no matter what, no matter what is said, no matter what is done. And so this, this strategy, if you will, the seven, you know, the seven commandments, worked quite well for his administration. Perfect. And unless you recognize it for what it is, you wouldn't know it's happening. Right. You have a general sense that something's not right. But do you really know what's happening and how it's happening? That's why this, this, this thing by the New York Times is, is valuable. Oh, Very yeah. Valuable. So, Cynthia, you know, the New York Times goes beyond just attacking Trump here. Trump is just a piece of, of a larger puzzle. 
And I, and I, you know, I commend, I admire them for that. You know, it's like the way we like to do it at Think Tech. Take a look at the larger truth. What is, what is the larger picture? So do you think, do you think in his investigation, Mueller knows about what the New York Times is writing and, and making movies about? Do you think that the New York Times knows what Mueller is doing no. and is shadowing Mueller's process? I don't think that they know about what Mueller is doing, because I think that Mueller has such a tight lock, and there are no leaks from what he's got going on. But I think he knows everything. I think he knows exactly what The New York Times is talking about. They're finding it on their own. He's already found it, because he's had plenty of agents out there looking for it already and making these connections. And for me, the dangerous thing in all this is that, like you said, it's, he's following this same pattern. Well, this same pattern is what got Putin elected, who will now be the president of Russia forever. Now, if we as Americans don't wake up and make some changes and do something about this, then that's the same path that I see Trump trying to follow. And we hear people say, oh, well, yeah, you know, liking him to Hitler. Well, that's kind of a far stretch, but we can certainly like him to Putin because he's very much following the exact same pattern, except that Putin went through, you know, the um, intelligence agencies. He was one of the head guys and his specialty. One of the things I learned in this little, um, these movies, and I recommend them to everyone because they were really informative. But one of the things was that that was his specialty, was cyber intelligence. He spent his whole life on it. Yeah, cyber intelligence is, he wasn't just an intelligence agent, which, you know, sometimes it's interviewing or investigating. Or this It's cyber intelligence. He it's, made his career on it. Yes. So this, he is so entrenched already. And, and the thing I'm very concerned about is we don't see our government doing anything about it. Well... The third movie, which I only got halfway through, but commend everybody to read the New York Times article. Take yes. a look at these movies, because they will inform you about things you don't know. And they will help to put it in perspective. And they mm -hmm. will scare you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> they will scare you. The third it's movie <laughs> has some pieces that are really interesting about Estonia and Ukraine. Okay? So Russia doesn't do this only to us. I mean, it is a weapon, and they're good at it. And they know how to find the, 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 the flaws, uh, what do you call them, the breaks, the cracks, the cracks, Crack. part of the Seven Commandments. They know how to perform the Seven Commandments, and they have done it in many places. Sometimes mm -hmm. it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but as you said, Tim, there's a long plan, always a long plan, and they double down on everything, and they mm -hmm. see if it works. And they have refined this to the point of making it very effective. Okay. So one of the places, their training ground, if you will, has been Estonia, another Ukraine. I mean, there are all kinds of terrible things they have done to both of those places. So there's uh, some footage there in mm -hmm. the third movie about a, a TV program in Ukraine. And uh, there are two—you uh, saw this part? There, there are two uh, news commentators, and it's uh, like an hour a day, every day, and they spend that whole hour— talking about what fake news Russia has tried to promulgate in the Ukraine that day. And they hit them right back. And, right. and the point of the story is uh, the best way, uh, same thing in Ukraine, uh, in Estonia, the, the best way to deal with this kind of fake news campaign, this, this disinformation campaign, which is intended to wreck your society, and I think it does, um, then is to, is to hit them right back. Now, the New York Times uh, will say about Trump, he will say, uh, they will say, um, the president lied when he said this or that, or the president falsely asserted when he said this or that. But I'm not sure they catch all the, the other stuff that the president not necessarily involved in. Uh, for example, the uh, Hillary Clinton claim on the pizza parlor. You remember yeah. that one? I do. I remember. So when we come back, that. we're going to talk pizza about Gate. Hillary Clinton and the pizza parlor. Pizza Gate. <laughs> remember that? It was called Pizza, pizza, pizza Gate. Gate. <laughs> and we're going we're to debunk that right in front of your eyes. We'll be right back. Right. Yeah, they. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, 
uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Okay, we're back, and the cliffhanger was the pizza parlor. This is like a few days before the 2016 election. All of a sudden, there was a scandalous thing about a pizza parlor in New York. So, in New York, I think it was. No? Mm -hmm. um, and Hillary Clinton was involved, and in the basement of the pizza parlor, this is so, you know, mysterious. She was running some sort of illegal sex business. Well, no, no, sex child ring. pornography. Child pornography yeah. sex in ring. the basement sex yeah. under the pizza parlor. Yes. Right. I mean, it's got all the touchstones of American culture. Child pornography, big issue. Pizza, everybody likes pizza. Um, Hillary Clinton, you know, is the, the candidate you love to hate. Uh, so what happened? Well, the bottom line is people believed it. And the bottom line is... from Russia. That's correct. This was, this was one of those planted news stories, the big lie, repeated enough times, feed it to an audience that are loyal followers, and it didn't, it didn't hurt that people didn't like Hillary Clinton. Right. That didn't hurt at all. And you just keep repeating it over and over again, and be, be, before you know it, people are talking about a rumor that wasn't true. And it resulted in, unfortunately, um, one individual bringing a gun and shooting up the pizza parlor. Right. I and that. that wasn't good. No. And they didn't even have a basement in that pizza yeah, parlor right. that they claimed had this right. sex ring going on in it, this child sex ring going on. <laughs> they didn't even have a basement. To have to do things in a basement that doesn't exist. Doesn't exist, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what, what, what interested me about that was that, <clears throat> okay, so they spread the story. Uh, wherever they seeded it, I don't, I don't know where they put it, in some newspaper, maybe some odd low circulation newspaper somewhere. Uh, and it, it bubbled up, got into bigger circulation, got on the internet, got into social media. Mm -hmm. But then after it was debunked, and it, after somebody found, some journalist took, took a look for a basement, found there was no basement, and it was debunked, um, it was still in the, in the ether. It was mm -hmm. still being passed around, including by rappers who were singing songs about it right. after it was shown to be untrue. And that's well, they would the, be the useful idiots yes. to keep the lie going <laughs> forward. One, yep. mm -hmm. And Alex Jones, he would be the useful idiot to keep something that's been debunked, completely debunked, to keep it going, the myth going forward. Not it just Alex Trump Jones. And the, Trump and the birther issue. I, I, right? It, it just debunked. came to my mind as well. Really silly. Yeah. The only difference is that Trump eventually came out and said, okay, that's, yeah, it's not true. Whereas Pizzagate, no one's ever come and said, this has been debunked. Right. No one that ever believed that it or was the big, you know, perpetuating the lie. No one's ever come back and said, yeah, I guess that wasn't true after all. Well, if you make a quiet statement like, okay, okay, it's not true. That doesn't change the rappers. Right. It doesn't change the social media. It doesn't change those uh, conservative radio, uh, radio commentators. They keep saying it. So it's in the cultural, you know, ether. It's still happening. And right. that's the most remarkable thing of all. So I guess the question I put to you guys in our remaining time is, uh, do we take a, a page out of the book from Ukraine, from Estonia? Um, do we have a radio show or a television show that you know, boldly goes uh, and takes the action uh, that Ronald Reagan was talking about, doing something right. about this, about hitting false news right on, the, right on the head and spending a fair amount of time debunking these things so that you have as much attention to the debunk as you do to the lie. Well, we have one guy who's doing that with, specifically with Trump anyway, and all he's doing is fact-checking all the things that he says. And they've come up with now 817 lies in the month of October leading up to this midterm. 814, oh, excuse me, 814 lies untruths that he said while he was out there campaigning for this, this midterm. 
And so, and every lie, I mean, every month, it's the same. It's way up there. So we're in the so we thousands know this, my, my reaction to that is, we know that. Right? It keeps on going. So, there was well, an article in I was this going with that. paper okay, about so. uh, something called call-in. Call and he had, Trump had given a long interview to a reporter from Colin. Oh yeah, Colin, right. Colin. Right. Sorry, and sorry. and uh, they did the count, you know, on the roll of lies, and they found that, that most of what he was saying was outrageously lie, oh. okay? And, yeah. and they went through a number of them. But see, uh, let me throw this at you. Why don't we spend more time on that? Why don't we go through each lie? Well, I, I think we saw something very similar, actually worse, in the 1950s with a, a senator named Joseph McCarthy. Sure. There you go. That was a big lie. Yep. Yeah. And what did it take? It finally took someone with enough, enough gravitas, Edwin R. Murrow, to right. debunk him openly. Okay? <laughs> I'm not sure we have a lot of people like that anymore, that have that kind of weight and gravitas and credibility to say, this is a bold-faced lie, stop it. Uh, and those, that's what those, we, need. we don't have someone like that. Well, we need, and, and, we've got MSNBC, we've got CNN. They are trying to but there's shine no a light, but there's no the credibility. People. Yeah, because now they're just fake news. Well, there's, so. there's an eighth commandment, and that is when you are turned out, then you criticize the people who turn you out. Correct. Right. Rachel Madden, you know, let's criticize her. Let's see if we can un undo her somehow. Um, but you know what? Um, what I what I would like to see. Uh, is regulation also. And this is yes. in the third movie as well, right. the New regulation. York Times third movie. And they have some footage of Zuckerberg with that little boy innocent look on his face. Oh, you're a neighbor, your neighbor here in Hawaii, eh? um, who, who goes to Congress and says, well, I, I know I made a mistake. This is like, a, yeah, I know that the birther issue is really not a birther issue. I know I made a mistake, and I'm very sorry for that. And then the question is, what do you do about it, aside from, you know, mea culpa? What did he do about that? Well, pretty much nothing. Baby steps is what the movie called it. And uh, I, don't, I don't think they've done anything. And Congress, there was fantastic footage about some of these people and some of these congressmen uh, in these hearings asking him questions about how Facebook works. And they were, what shall I say, completely ignorant. Right. They had, had clue. no idea. Had a clue. A clue. A clueless. And he knew that before he testified. Right. Right. And he strung him up by saying, I'm not sure what you mean. You're going to have to explain your level of knowledge to me before I answer that question. Well, they had no level of knowledge, so he right. made monkeys out of them. He intimidated them before the testimony. That's, right. what, that's what it was like. Yeah. Somebody has to get in there and, and regulate him. Europe yeah, is doing do. a better job than we are. You'd think we would have the sophistication, the expertise, the sources um, to ask good questions and then to regulate. He needs to be regulated, don't you think so? Oh, I know they do, because there was one um, employee, and this is, what, three years ago, before they got caught and had to come out, and before he had to come and put his little innocent face on TV, um, there was one of the top uh, executives that saw what was going on and said, this is a five-alarm fire. We have a serious issue. And still, they did nothing but... You know, put and it under the rug. Anything. Just shove well, it under the rug. Hear, congressional hearings going nowhere. <laughs> but remember, let's not downplay the value and the power of money via lobbyists in Congress. Right. right. There's probably a reason why Facebook hasn't received any kind of antitrust regulation is because the lobbyists are hard at work. Right. And it's not just Facebook. It's probably other concerned industries, you know, be it Google or whatever, that are concerned about excessive regulation on their industry. Sure. Well, and they talk about um, Cheryl Sanderberg or Sanderson. I can't remember. Oh, the her number last two name. at uh, number Zuckerberg. two at yeah, um, there who's Sandberg. the COO? Sandberg is it? Yeah. Um, and how she has been hard at work in Congress, like you say, with the money that they got. From the Russians, because <laughs> they didn't want to stop all those ads. They got a hundred million dollars, yeah, I think, or, they, or more. Or, or more. I think it was like a billion is what it was oh, okay, more like. okay, fair. I think it was in the billion range when I was reading the article. And, yeah, that's why they, it was money. It was all about money. Well, it always has been and always it will always be. It always is about money, right? So, you know, we used to say that people have to, you know, this was with, with discussions with the uh, School of Journalism, people have to read uh, and use critical thinking on the news right. that comes at them in, in social media. I, th I think that doesn't work, sorry. Social media is intended to get into your mind, and if there's somebody trying to deceive you, that, that will deceive a lot of people. We need more. I'm sorry to say the government needs to step in and make sure this stuff. So, I make you the government, Tim. 
What do you do? Thanks. Regulate Jay. for me, man. Regulate. <laughs> Regulate. Better you than me, dude. Well, first off, you replace the chair of the FCC. That's number one. Okay. Right. There you go. Okay, because he, he's a lackey. And, you know, like I said in the last show, I mean, anytime you try to get uh, control of the local media through Sinclair, that's a strategy. I'm sorry. Right. That, that, right. They, not this Sinclair. Yeah, I, I no, have no, no connection. I have no connection. It wasn't me. That's right. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> um, but you, be, you basically have to analyze the problem and start holding hearings and then act on it. Right. And recognize that there's going to be a heavy lobbying effort to stop you. And you have to hold hands. And, 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 and don't break the chain. Do what you have to do to get this addressed. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. Now, in all of that, where does Trump fit? What would he do? Would he stop any effort to regulate? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry or, to say I or, have to agree with you. Or he might just go through the motions of looking like he's doing it when he's not. Yeah. Because I think that everything he says now is a lie. Um, you know, that... What I was saying in that one commentary that I did, you know, false assist in uno, false assist in omnibus. Yeah, it's like false in one, false in all. But that means so, everybody is, if it's false in one respect, it's false in all. And it's a standard jury instruction that, you know, that you look at when you are, um, when you're going, when you're looking at someone that is on trial. But, um, or a witness that's coming on there, they tell you to look at it. If they lie one time, then they're probably lying about everything. So, and I, you can apply that to Trump, but there's another thing we can apply to Trump that's like a, a psychological aspect. He does so much projection, and projection is when you are doing something and you accuse somebody else of it, and it's really what you are doing. And that's him. He's a psychologist. Every, dream. Oh, and that's exactly what I, was, I wrote that down in my notes even. He is a psychiatrist's dream because he has every subtle, twisted nuance of things. Okay, let me ask you my last question. This is the optimism <clears throat> versus pe pe uh, pessimism question. So the Russians have been doing this to us a long time. Trump has accelerated it. Zuckerberg has accelerated mm -hmm. it. It's worse than before. And they have driven trucks between, you know, disparate groups on every level, on race, on education, on religion, on economics, disparity of income, all those things, they have right. rendered us, okay, they are rendering us, um, and they've done a terrific job with Trump's uh, help as a uh, useful idiot in, in the past couple of years. Is it too late for us? Are we going to be able to survive this onslaught? So. Or, or is there a way that this great nation, I, I say that with, you know, complete patriotism because that's how I feel about it. Um, is there a way this great nation can r recover? Thoughts? Absolutely. It already happened on Election Day. Yeah. The, the, the gears of our democracy is going to work. And the, we just saw where the House has now been taken over by the check and balance system. The rule of law will, will, will survive. We'll get through this. You know this is on tape and everything. I do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to commit to this. <laughs> I, I am I, hopeful. If I had twenty dollars in my wallet, I'd put it down on that table right now. So. <laughs> I don't know if I'd bet on it. I I will hope for it, but I don't know if I'd bet on it. Um, because the people that are in control have so much power right now and have so much ability to pervert the rule of law. And in the same way that the gerrymandered districts were creating, you know, a, a misinformation of voters, I believe that same theory can be applied to the rule of law. And so I'm, I'm very concerned. I worry a lot for it. I don't just go, oh yeah, I believe in a. Well, Americans. I didn't say I wasn't concerned. I am <laughs> very concerned. But you'll put twenty dollars. But I'll put twenty dollars that the rule of law will will survive. I only we'll bet on what this. I'm sure of, so okay. I won't bet. Nathan, Nathan Hale. <laughs> yes. Nathan Hale. The price of wow. liberty is eternal vigilance. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Great to talk with you on this. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Great to have Thanks you. Yes. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.